since The Kissing Booth 2 is premiering tomorrow on Netflix, and while my quickie review of this has only has only got a mere one view, well guess what? That's gonna change. Get ready as I bring to you a re-review of the one that started all the kissing booth right now. Bad days entertainment rankings and reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duel, better known to y'all as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a re-review, an extended re-review of The Kissing Boot, which premiered on Netflix a couple of years ago. Uh, the film was directed by Vince Marcello, who will be directing the brand new sequel, which is coming up. The movie stars Joy King along with Joel Corney, Jacob Elordi, and Molly Ringwald. Well, despite the film was heavily dissed by critics and what have you, it was still a big success for Netflix due to it being widely consumed by viewers, most notably young viewers, because this film unexpectedly got nominated for well, Kids Choice Awards, along with to all the boys I've loved before, which happened to come out the same year. Anywho, yeah, the film follows a quirky, late-blooming teenager who's budding romance with a high school senior and bad boy, but her lifelong friendship with his kid brother in jeopardy. So, if you're ready, let's get into our story. Now, our main character is L. Evans and oh, no, start that. Starts with L. Evans and Lee Flynn, born at the same time in the same hospital in L.A. Yeah, L's our main character, and so is Lee. Sorry, I got carried. I got to cross line or something like that. My 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 bad. <laughs> anyway. They've been best friends all their lives due to their mothers, Joni Evans and Sarah Flynn. Growing up together and having a deep bond, they create rules to maintain their friendship. Chiefly, they are forbidden from dating each other's relatives. Specifically, Lee's handsome older brother, Noah, who Elle has had a crush on for years. As the two grow up, they develop a love for dancing, specifically on an arcade dance machine on the pier. Yes, a la Dance Dance Revolution. When Elle is 11, she discovers her mom is terminally ill, and three years later, she eventually passes away. As she grows up, Elle's crush on Noah deepens, but she tries her hardest to forget it. Well, two years later, students are returning to school after summer break. And apparently, this is where the fun begins. Elle splits her pants, and her other pants are at the dry cleaner, so she is forced to wear a tiny skirt from years ago, apparently. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of this movie. And yeah, we can see her bloomers and what have you, which is... <laughs> Sorry, everyone, forgive me, but this looks so cute. <laughs> I'm serious. This movie's pretty cute in ways because of Joy King, who is absolutely cray adorbs. Believe me, since she's since I got introduced to her in Ramon and Beezus, eight, which came out eight years before this, she's grown a bit. <laughs> All right, now where was I? Oh yes, now I remember. Now when an older student named Tuppen inappropriately slaps Ellie's booty, <laughs> Lee almost punches him, but Noah defends his brother and L and fights Tuppen. So Tuppen, Noah, and L serve detention where Tuppen apologizes by performing a dance wearing a tight skirt in front of the students. Ooh. For which L accepts his request for a date. But he does not show up though, later telling L that Noah threatened everyone to not pursue L romantically. Yeah.
But anyway, now Elle and Lee create a kissing booth for a school fundraiser. During a party, Elle tells the girls that Noah will be part of the booth, despite he is having already refused her request. But at the kissing booth, everyone goes well until Lee serves as the kisser instead of Noah. Angry that Elle lied about Noah's participation, the popular girls known as the OMG girls set L in the to kiss an undesirable student. At the last second, the student waves Noah ahead, and they share a pa series of passionate kisses in front of the entire school. Uh oh! So cleaning up the booth, L is upset to see Noah flirting with another girl and runs outside where it starts to rain. Noah offers her a ride on his motorcycle, but the rain forces them to shelter in the park and where Elle kisses Noah, and but then tells him she cannot be just another sexual conquest. Hurt by this, Noah reveals he has feelings for her, but they kiss again but are interrupted by a security guard who recognizes Noah, telling him to stop bringing girls there, angering Elle. At a beach party, she is soon harassed by another student named Warren, and Noah breaks his promise to Elm to not to fight and body slams Warren. She calms him down, and they drive to the Hollywood sign, admitting their feelings for each other and establishing rules for their relationship. Most importantly, that Lee never find out. They share a passionate kiss and have a little S-E-X. Well, apparently, Elle and Noah keep seeing each other in secret. Well, I don't, I hope you don't mind, but it's been some time since I saw this movie. I've seen it twice, so it's either Elle or Ellie. Well, whatever. <laughs> so, I apologize, but when I see the second one, you'll help me remember. So, to anybody who has seen this movie, I apologize if I'm saying it either Elle or Ellie. So, enough said. So, she and Noah keep seeing each other in secret. Noah's mother almost catches them in his room. Hiding under his bed, Elle overhears Noah's mother say he has been accepted to Harvard. And that he must be nice to Elle because she has a crush on him. They share a laugh and Noah makes Elle promise not to tell anyone about his college acceptance. So Elle falls and cuts her face in the garage while they are fixing Noah's motorcycle. And when Lee walks in, he accuses Noah for hurting Elle. Surprised when Elle calms Noah's anger, Lee asks Elle about her and Noah's relationship, which she denies but feels guilty. As Noah and Elle share a kiss after agreeing to tell Lee the truth, he walks out on them. Oh, wait a minute, he walks in on them. Oh, whoops, my mistake. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost track. I got words mixed up. The brothers fight, which will leave me. That's kind of one my 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 bit of a negative on this movie. This was just terrible. Well, not terrible, terrible. It's not that I didn't hate it. It's just I expected. Okay, so no offense. And Lee furiously severs his friendship with Elle and when he finds out her and Noah have not only been kissing and meeting up behind his back, but also sleeping together. Heartbroken, Elle yells at Noah and blames him for the argument, telling him to leave her alone. And hurt by this, Noah agrees and drives off. Now we're going to get to the final act of this movie and the ending. So you got five seconds to stop this video, go to the description box below, and fast forward to the time below to avoid ending spoilers. Okay, thank you very much for your understanding. Here we go with your five seconds. Okay, you've been warned. Now weeks pass until one day. Mrs. Flynn visits Elle and explains that even she and Elle's mother had messy arguments sometimes, but they always made up because that's what best friends do. So she urges Elle to fix things up with Lee. Eventually, they reconcile and Elle goes to the prom with him and his girlfriend, Rachel. 
There, a replica of the kissing booth is brought out with Noah, who tells Elle he loves her. She explains she cannot see him due to hurting those she loves and runs away. At Elle and Lee's birthday costume party the next day, she tells Lee that if he cannot accept her and Noah's relationship, he should not be a part of her life. Lee relents and agrees to help Elle find Noah who left for the airport to leave for college. Driving Lee's car, Elle shares her true feelings for Noah with Lee, who reveals himself to be Noah in Lee's costume. Elle admits to Noah that she loves him, and Elle and Noah spend the following weeks together before he leaves for college. Watching him go, she is unsure if the relationship will last, but knows a part of her heart will always belong to him, and ride this motorcycle into the sunset in the story. <sighs> yeah, and then, of course, there's, like, a, a blooper reel, gag reel at the credits. That's pretty funny, too. Yeah. Okay, everyone. So, what did I think of the kissing booth? I'm gonna say, I don't care what the critics say. They, did, they deemed the storyline themes to be cliched and uh, misogynistic and what have you, which is completely understandable. I don't care. I love, I loved every, almost every bit of it. But it's just that the fight between the two brothers was unexpected and what have you. I knew this could have happened sometime or soon, but it just. But even so, I eventually loved the kissing booth. This was just, I don't know. I loved it. I mean, the cast is pretty good, actually. Um, well, I I like the performances from the cast. I mean, we have um, Molly Ringwald. A lot of y'all know who that is. Of course, she was famous in Team Flicks back in the 80s, like Sixteen Candles and and Pre and Pink, which of course I've reviewed, and The Breakfast Club. Yeah, um, she played um, Sarah, Noah and Lee's mother. Now, I liked the performances of the two brothers. Joel Courtney, who plays Lee, he was really good. And Jacob Elordi, who played Noah, very good. But I gotta say, it was Joy King who stole the show. I absolutely loved her. She was just so adorbs. As Rochelle L. Evans, or Shelly, or, well, if you prefer to call her L or Ellie, well, or Shelly, whatever, whoever. I loved her. that char the character. It was absolutely great. I absolutely liked the another scene in this movie where she's all drunk and about to strip down. But don't worry, we don't see anything like that. I know she probably just didn't want that to be included. And I can completely understand that. Thank you. But anyway. Now then, would I recommend the kissing booth? I'd say hell yeah! This is something you need to see. Believe me, I loved it. I don't care what the critics say. Don't mind them. How should I say it? Screw them, okay? The kissing booth is a teen rom-com you need to see. So, enough said. I I think the story was pretty good. The characters were really good. I just really enjoyed it. So anyway, what are your thoughts on the kissing booth? Please feel free to tell me in the comment section below. Now, I hope everybody's looking forward to the sequel, which will be premiering on Netflix tomorrow. I know I am. Anyway, again, leave your comments on what you thought about the movie in the comment section. If you like this video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me again tomorrow when I give you a spoiler-free review of The Kissing Booth 2. Thanks for watching. Now, if you like this, this check out these other two uh, Reviews in the upper left hand corner is my review of Pre and Pink with Molly Ringwald, which I reviewed earlier this year. In the upper right hand corner is my review of another Netflix movie. This is a re review of To All the Boys I've Loved Before, which came out the same year the Kissing Booth did. And in the bottom 
Left Hand Core is my spoiler-free review of To All the Boys, P.S. I Still Love You, the follow-up to that particular movie, which came out earlier this year. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe to my channel for more if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TVs, TV, video games, etc. If, you, if you're interested in those, then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya!